Collectors and welcome to another Bosk Bounty video. Welcome to episode 179 of Ask Boss Bounty. This is the weekly Q&A series that drops every Sunday where I take your questions from the comment section below and do my best to answer them. So if you do have a question for next week's episode and you want to be featured in the video, be sure to leave your questions in the comment section below and hopefully you'll be featured. If you do have to enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like down below because that really does help the video and the channel. And also subscribe if you're new. And with all that being said, let's get on to the first question. Okay then, so first of all, I just want to bring to your attention that YouTube are doing something a little bit strange with people's usernames and handles and things like that. They made a change where you could actually select your handle, the at something something, so mine's at Bosk's Bounty. So now when I comment on other people's videos, it actually says at Bosk's Bounty rather than Bosk's Bounty, like my actual sort of name of the channel, which is a bit weird. So this person's question is actually from at 77 Boldman, but I'm pretty sure that that is David Stevens. I, I know your avatar now, uh, you comment a lot on my videos. So maybe going forward, you guys might want to put at the end of your question, your name or the name that you want me to read out when I read out your question, because sometimes these handles just do not match who you are basically. So anyway, uh, the first question is from at 77 Boldman and he says, hi Tim, love to you and your family question for next week. We all know that you have a Bosk focus collection, but if not Bosk, what focus collection would interest you? For example, troopers, clones, Ewoks, droids, Jedi, etc, etc. I'm partial to astromech droids myself. Keep up the good work. So I think it depends really on whether that focus stretches across all different lines. My Bosk focus is, you know, I collect anything Bosk. But if it was just three and three quarter inch figures, then most definitely it would have to be centered around probably astromech droids, you know, because you do get a lot through the droid factory. You get a lot in the three and three quarter inch Hasbro line. Um, the Ewoks interest me at the moment because I've been getting a lot of the Ewoks. Um, and man, you've mentioned clones there. I, I do love the clone troopers, of course. But I think if I was going to have a focus of, you know, types of figures, if it wasn't Bosk, then it would have to be probably astromech droids or maybe just droids in general. Scott Whitehouse says, hi Tim, another brilliant, insightful video as always. Thank you, buddy. He says, I'm excited to see the HasLab reveal and hope it will offer good value for money. But there is a lot of chatter out there online that it will be too expensive or not offer the value for money of some of the recent G.I. Joe HasLabs. What do you think Hasbro needs to do to ensure collectors go for this HasLab? Is it price or tiers or figures that will ultimately decide the fate of the HasLab? Yeah, so we kind of touched this on last week's episode when we we're talking about, you know, can we compare it to G.I. Joe Haslabs? And the answer is no, because there's no license fee involved with the G.I. Joe. So they can ultimately put those out cheaper. When it comes to Star Wars, I think there's multiple things that are going to contribute to the success or failure of a Haslab. Namely, the first thing is, you know, what is it? You know, what media is it from? Is it going to hit the right notes for everybody, essentially? If it is the ghost that's been rumoured, then I do hope that all those people that have been calling for it over the last however many years, you know, do like what they see and that they do back it. But of course, we do know that the tears do sort of matter as well. I think, you know, if it is going to be the ghost, then just the same as if it was going to be like a Ewok Village or a Death Star, then ultimately you're going to want the figures to go with it. And I think when you look at the ghost, if you don't get the crew with it, at that point, you know, whether that's a tier or, um, you know, with the base offering, then that is a problem because I don't think people are going to want a ghost and then have to wait three years for all the figures to come out. So I'm really, really hoping that if it is the ghost, that they do the right thing and that within that sort of price range or however they do it, the tiers, that we get all of the crew. I think that's pretty important, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. Phil Siders 2349 says, Hey BB, wanted to say I really enjoy your content. Thank you, buddy. He says, I find myself watching your Q&A every Sunday evening. I have a two part question for you. If I'm correct, 2025 should mark the 40th anniversary of the Power of the Force figures. Since Hasbro likes their retro collection, what do you think are the chances that Hasbro will release a wave of these with coins in a retro wave? I would love to see R2, Amanaman, Anakin, Luke in Stormtrooper Disguise and so on. As for the second part of the question, since Hasbro again like their prototype figures with a release of the retro Power of the Force wave, then that would be a good time for a prototype R2-D2. Most picks of an R2 in prototype stage have always had a clear dome. Hasbro could make a prototype R2 with a pop-up lightsaber and have a different coloured lightsabers to see in the clear dome with different coloured body and legs, of course. Heck, 
they could even have one with a black lightsaber. What do you think? Thank you for what you do and keep up the great work. So I'm just going to answer your second question first of all. Um, it sounds great what you're suggesting there, but I've got to admit that I am sort of a bit bored of all of those prototype figures now. If I'm honest, I wish I wish they would just go away. <laughs> I think we've had too many of those. But the one that you suggest does sound pretty cool, I must admit. Um, so would I like to see them in the retro collection? It's funny you should say that actually, because whenever I think about these figures here, I always look at the yak face and think to myself, will they do more of those in the vintage collection without even thinking about the retro collection? And thinking about it and thinking about how Hasbro think, then the more likely thing that they will do is a retro collection version of those, isn't it? I could see a wave of six with, um, you know, Luke Stormy and, and people like that with those coins. I can really see them doing that in retro collection, which will be a bit disappointing because I kind of would like to see some more, maybe just one wave of, of these in the vintage collection. I think that would be pretty cool. Even if they were to like repack some figures and just get them out, I think that would I think that would be pretty cool. But yeah, I think the uh, Power of the Force anniversary could well see a retro collection line of those, most definitely. Miles Hoop says, hey Tim, we're only a couple of months away from delivery of the Boba Fett's throne room price tag of 230. Do you think we'll see more of this type of release in the line? Something to break up the long in-betweens of Haslabs for TVC. Pump for this one. Best scenes of Jabba's Palace and the Sail Barge from the films, in my opinion. Just need the Rancor Pit next. Yeah, we do need a Rancor Pit. That would be awesome. Um, but in terms of that expression, um, those sort of bigger sets that aren't quite Haslabs that they're doing as Pulse exclusives, I honestly believe that the success or failure of this particular one, the Throne Room, might sort of decide for them whether they want to con continue to do that expression if you like um, which is a bit unfortunate because you know they have put that out as the book of Boba Fett when if they'd put it out as a return of the Jedi with a Jabba I think it would have sold a lot more I think we can all safely say that it would um, and unfortunately I'm not sure if they look at things like that they'll just go oh that expression didn't really work maybe so in fact blaming the expression rather than blaming the sort of product itself and what source material it's come from that's my fear, and then they won't do those sorts of things again if they, if ultimately it didn't sell as much as they had hoped for, basically. Um, it's just funny how they sort of take these lessons, but we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Newland USA 4104 I told you these handles were weird now. Do you think TVC Tuscan Raiders in the four-pack from Book of Boba Fett will be able to sit on Banthers? In the photographs, the way they are standing makes it look like they probably have ball-jointed hips as well as rocker ankles. So from what I can remember when these first came out and we had some answers from Hasbro about them, I'm pretty sure that they share the legs of the Tuscan Warrior, which are the actual legs of the new Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think, from the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, which means they do have rocker ankles and they do have those new barbell hips. So they will hopefully be able to sit on a banter that you own. As you can see that I've lined some of them up now. Now we have him on his own card. And these just look great together. I cannot wait for that four pack to come out so I can have the Chieftain with them and some other sort of uh, more accurate, more screen accurate Tuscans with all the new legs and everything. It's going to be great to have a little army or a little clan of Tuscans. Here's another great name. Eurobum5000 says, Hey boss, big fan of yours for a while and you got me into collecting again. Have a question for next week. Do you display your figures in particular scenes from the movies or shows or just on stands on the shelves? Also, very curious if you happen to know when the 212 four pack will be released on Hasbro Pulse. That I do not know, unfortunately. Um, it's a bit annoying, really, because, you know, I really do want to check out that set um, and hopefully it will be soon. In terms of your first question, I, um, yeah, my figures are displayed on stands, but I do sort of have them grouped a bit like here, you know, um, in sort of scenes or movies and what have you. But I will be moving collection rooms very soon and I do plan to sort of have my loose figures displayed in a nicer way basically you know surrounded by vehicles and play sets and actually utilizing the sort of world building aspect of it a little bit more than i than i currently do but i will be doing a brand new room tour of this room that i'm in right now um because after that i'll be packing a lot of it away ready for when i move into my new room which is going to be built in the next sort of eight weeks we're having a loft conversion um so check out that video when it comes out because that will be the last room tour um, I haven't done one since 20, 
20, I think, and the room, or what's in the room at least, has, has changed a lot. Lieutenant Santiago26 says, hey Tim, I'm new here to the channel, so very welcome, my friend. But do you think we'll ever get an updated set release of the Delta Squad using the new Clone Commando body mold in this TVC line along with other commandos? So I've, I've had this question before, and I think, the, you know, I think they'll do what they did in the Black Series, basically, and use the Hunter body. I know that's probably not ideal for what everybody wants because they're not 100% screen accurate, but I think it's probably the best that we will get. So yeah, they'll do a like clone commando and the Delta squad or what have you, just like they've done in Black Series. That's my prediction anyway. I don't know for fact. That's just, you know, now we've got that Hunter. I think they'll want to probably utilize that body for other figures. Mighty Makoko says, hey boss, question for next week. Do you have any idea when the Book of Boba Fett Retro Wave will be up for order? Also, is there any information about the Ahsoka Retro Wave or any other Retro Waves for 2023? So again, just like that clone four pack, I really don't know when these are gonna be coming up for pre-order. I, I seem to remember when they were announced that they were due for fall this year. So we'll have to see, could be around maybe August, September that you'll be able to order those. Maybe sooner, I, I don't know. Um, as for the Ahsoka Retro Wave, I think that is still a thing. I heard rumours about that a while ago, and if you look on Yak Face's um, website, he still mentions them as, as potential figures. So I'm imagining that that will be a wave. It's you know the, the Ahsoka series is coming out. They always seem to put out one of these new media waves in Retro Collection. Did it for the Book of Boba Fett, obviously. They've done it for Mando, so they'll probably do it for Ahsoka. But uh, again, when that comes out, who knows? Reckless Deck says, Tim, question for next week. What does it take for Hasbro to pivot when they make a mistake or release something that fans aren't happy with? And how long does it take to make a course correction? For example, when they release the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett without his little chess readout thing. I'm wondering if the negative fan feedback for the new Return of the Jedi Han Solo's legs or similar situation would ever be enough to make them revise the figure with updated leg articulation and just start shipping the new version on the same card back and VC number without interruption or would they just take the negative feedback hit and move on? So yeah, I think there's two slightly different examples in there. If you look at the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett one, for example, that one I believe was a mistake that they noticed. I don't think that was like any type of fan backlash because I think the corrected version was arriving almost simultaneously with the, with the incorrect version. It wasn't like we all got the one with the incorrect chest moaned about it and then three months later we got the, the the new corrected one they almost came out at the same time so they probably noticed it stopped production of the one without the chest readout and began production with the chest readout i think with han solo's legs i think there is a lot more involved to get that figure changed you know to change the sort of lower torso and the legs and everything it's completely different tooling and i think this particular one they are going to be taking that negative hit and they will be moving on very much like they did with the Leia Endor as well, when they sort of re-released that figure, didn't make too many changes to it. Very, very poor figure. We all moaned about it, and we have not seen a correction to that, and we, we probably won't for a very, very long time, in my opinion. So there's two different things there. I think other things maybe, like if you look at Axe Woes, for example, why did he have a removable helmet when the other two of his little gang, Bo-Katan and Koska Reeves, they had swappable heads. Why did they change that for Axe Woves when the original images for him had that same removable swappable head? So maybe that's the sort of thing that they'll course correct and bring out a different version of him with the swappable heads. So then we can have all three of those figures looking correct with the proper you know, proportioned helmets and things like that. So maybe they'll do something like that, I don't know. Steven Novak says, hey Tim, great work. We are so close to VC300. Any thoughts on what it would be? Have you heard any rumors? What would you wish it to be? Maybe a Bosk. Take care, my friend. I've heard no rumors whatsoever about what it could be, but in terms of like me trying to predict what it could be, I think we're about 15 numbers stroke figures away from 300 now. I think he was VC285. There might be some in some like four packs or something that are further along in that numbering, but I, I think with the amount of figures that are still to come out this year, I think we'll probably hit 300 maybe at the beginning of next year. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And if that's the case, then obviously we're getting into waves for next year. And let's just hope that they've taken on board what the community have been saying. And maybe we'll get a really big character as being VC 300. Maybe one of the main heroes, for example. That would be, that would be cool. Uh, but as I say, I know nothing about it. So we'll just have to wait and see. C3PO Concept says, hey, what's up? Great video. 
just picked up the retro Tarkin and really enjoy it. What's your dream wave of retro OT figures that Kenner never produced? I'd love to see a Rebel Fleet Trooper and a Sand Trooper. Well, those two would definitely be in a wave for me, 100%, because I think those are two that, you know, most people would like and would have liked back in the Kenner days. And, uh, you know, sort of blatant misses from that line, if you like. Other ones that I can think of that I would like is maybe a Han Solo Stormtrooper to go with the Luke Stormtrooper that we have in the Kenner line. That would be pretty cool. You know, going back to the other question about the Power of the Force cards, maybe they could maybe they could release it on one of them. I don't know. And then um, maybe Garandan to go with the Sand Troopers. That would be a pretty cool one as well. Um, Uncle Owen, perhaps, maybe. I don't know, man. There's quite a few to think of when you think of, you know, all the Canteen aliens and things like that that you could do. Um, Dr. Everzan to go with um, Walrus Man that we do have in the Kenner line. So there's there's five or six anyway that I, that I can think of off the bat. A mad man with a soapbox says, really enjoy your videos. Here's a question for next week. There is a TVC wave due in February 24. The only figure we know for that wave is R5-D4. Any thoughts or guesses on the other figures on that wave? Cheers, keep up the good work. So first of all, I'm pretty sure that that wave is slated for this year. Obviously, I think they've put 2024 to cover them, but I'm pretty sure it'll be the final wave of the year, probably end of November, December. Hopefully, that's, that's what I'm thinking anyway. And the figures that are going to be in that wave, I would imagine that they are going to be the ones that we've had pipelined. So I'm talking about Director Krennic, Pre Vizsla, Darth Revan. Um, I'm thinking that those figures will be in that wave, maybe with some other figures as well, perhaps even from the Ahsoka series. Um, there's also a wave before that that's got the Grand Inquisitor and the Luke figure from the Book of Boba Fett. I'm thinking also there may be some figures from that show in that wave as well. They may be spread across the two. I don't know for a fact, but you know when looking at it, I think we're missing some figures from those waves, and then you've got three or four pipeline figures. So that's kind of my thinking of how those are going to sort of pan out. If you check out Instagram with Jason from Yak Face, he's you know sort of rumored some figures from the ahsoka series and I, I can see those slotting into those two waves and mark m5561 says hey bb question for next week would you rather see the rebels characters released as part of a possible ahsoka release or or on their own and have some other lesser known characters from ahsoka on tvc i think when it comes to new media i just want the main characters so like you know if there is an ahsoka show which we know there is and we know we're going to be getting figures from it you can bet your bottom dollar that one of the figures that we'll be getting is the lead character. Regardless of how many times we've had her before, we will get an Ahsoka from the Ahsoka show and how she looks in that show. Then, you know, for me, if you're looking at the trailer, then I want those two sort of dark side users, the guy that's unfortunately passed away in real life. I do apologize, I can't remember his name. And his like apprentice woman with the red or orange lightsaber. She looked cool. You know, I want those figures in there. Maybe a trooper or something. You mentioned the Rebels characters there. You know, we know that they're going to be in the show. But are we going to be getting some of those as part of a HasLab? You know, so it's, we're going to be finding out a lot more very, very soon. Because obviously we're going to find out what the uh, HasLab is at SDCC next month. And then, of course, Ahsoka starts the month afterwards. And there'll be one of those campaigns that runs throughout the series. Just like they did with The Mandalorian Season 3 and The Book of Boba Fett you know they release things each week as like some kind of like mini campaign and that's probably where you'll see the retro collection wave and maybe some reveals for these as the season goes on you'll see some of these characters popping up uh, as tvc figures uh, but for me you know ultimately when these shows get announced as i said i just want the main characters to start with i don't just want you know one good guy but not the bad guy to go with them that really annoys me when they do that so fingers crossed that we get a decent amount and then obviously they can start sprinkling in some more as time goes on. Michael Dietz4190 says, Hey BB, do you think they would ever do a Droidica as a TVC Deluxe figure? With its appearance in Jedi Survivor, I feel like they could do one under that logo as well as one for the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. It's entirely possible. I did hear a rumbling or a rumour. I can't remember how long ago I heard this, but I did hear that perhaps the Black Series might be getting one of those Droidicas. Um, we'll have to as, as a deluxe so we'll have to see if that happens and if that does happen then that makes the possibility of it being in the vintage collection you know it enhances the probability of it basically because they've already got the digital sculpts we know that now that they're sort of scaling down figures for the tvc ones they've done in the black series they're sharing those sort of digital sculpts a little bit more they're they're able to do it better these days 
So may maybe you never know. It would be pretty cool as you say it's in multiple media now. So it's something that I'd definitely like to see because I would definitely want a few of those rolling about, especially from the uh, Phantom Menace. If we got a new Maul, for example, and a new Qui Gon, that would be pretty awesome. All right, then, guys, that's it for another episode of Ask Boss Bounty. This was episode 179. So I want to thank you all for watching. And as I mentioned before, if you do have a question for next week's episode, episode 180, then please leave your questions in the comment section below. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and channel members for supporting me in the way that you do. It is really, really appreciated. And thank you to everybody that's watching the video. Hit the like button and we shall see you on the next one.